All right, blue-white control. Does it have advantages over the blue-red we played yesterday? It sure does. It's called Cast Out, Holmes. Freaking Cast Out. Uh, this card takes care of just about anything, and it's a permanent removal if they can't get rid of the enchantment. So that's interesting. And that is probably the best case for blue-white control, just on its own. Like, that's... That's where it's at. Everything else is a little bit addressing. There are some specific weaknesses that aren't as bad. Blue-red control, blue-black control. Those can roll over a bit against a Gaia's Revenge, but white gives you Blessed Alliance. A lot of the other cards are very much the same. There is more life gain, so if burn or spells that act as burn are in the format, it's a lot better to have Blessed Alliance and Renewed Faith hanging around. Gideon's Reproach, people give me grief about this card. I specifically run it because I don't like losing to man lands. If you look at the rest of the deck, the only thing that deals with a man land is a Blessed Alliance, really. Gideon kind of does until it's dead, which it dies from a lot of things. But there aren't that many ways. There's a lot of things that say non-land permanent. Cast Out says non-land permanent. So does Commit. So... Just getting beaten down by shambling vents in the mirror is so infuriating because otherwise I think you're pretty mirror favored that I think you have to run a couple of these. Sometimes you have to run subpar spells in your control decks to fill the holes of what you commonly face. And that's what Gideon's Reproach does for me. It also helps out in other cases. Obviously, you kill a smuggler's copter or a heart of Kieran with it, you're, you're smiling, but it's not really the reason that we run Gideon's Reproach over other things like Sky Whaler's Shot. We run it because of frickin' Shambling Vent. If I had to put a name, if named is my fear, Shambling Vent it is. All right. Otherwise, the deck is very similar to what we ran yesterday. Getting into the Trials is interesting in the deck. Not always a great finisher. It can be, but it's often not. It's often that they can deal with the 4-4 attacker, either with a Blessed Alliance or a Grasp of Darkness. But ticking it up and... Just kind of running it up as high as you can while preventing something like a man land or a smuggler's copter from doing anything. It's pretty good. And then regular Gids is your real beat stick. He does the actual work. So yeah, mana base, 25 lands. Could be 26, but I have a lot of cycling, so I'm hoping that 25 will suffice. Westvale Abbey, also commonly a finisher. We can run two here because we have the life gain. Life gain lets us get away with doing more with Abby than we do in other decks. So let's uh, find some games, see how this does. Do I have another volunteer for a battle? Would anybody like to come online and test this deck and do a match? Just putting it out there. I'm just going to wait and see if anybody responds, so give me a second. All right, I'm going to hit up the uh, ladder, and we're going to take a shot. We're going to go hunting seals. What's up? If anybody wants the deck list, I just swapped the featured deck list. All you have to do is reload the screen, and you should see it. And we've got a volunteer. And Fierce Majesty has stepped up to the plate. Let's put him through the blue-white grind. His hand's great. No problem. Curious to see what kind of pressure our opponent can put on this. 
And things are already looking like turn two will be about cycling this card. And a call the bloodline could get interesting as it turns all of what might be dead cards from our opponent into 1-1s. One the only real solution we have is cast out. And do we want to spend that on a call the bloodline? Hard to say. Hard to say. But this game, I'm already intrigued of what could happen. Second call the bloodline. Okay, well, I'm not casting any out, I don't think. I think we're just going to spend our whole game worried about 1-1 one, one lifelink. I'm going to cycle this to try to encourage me to hit my land drops. Very good. And yeah, if we deploy this, it starts getting attacked right away. That's kind of frustrating, right? Whereas if I leave up the counter magic, what happens? It's very unclear what I'd even counter from this spot. I'm going to deploy, though. I guess if I start making him dump his hand onto the battlefield, I'll have an easier time cleaning it up. But we're definitely going to go up. I, I'm, this, your land will not damage me if you accidentally planar outburst it. Haha! -ha! How about that? And no creation of a vampire. Weird. And then a blessed spirits. Weird.com. All right. Is that whenever you cast an enchantment? Well, our opponent did that in the wrong order. But sometimes that's the way you draw the cards. All right. Now I've got a target. Opponent with the pause. And here we go. Hopefully we get to a stage where the game's late enough we can just pair our Westvale Abbey tokens against the Bloodline Vampires. Now, in the long term, we'll run out of life way before our opponent will, but maybe we don't care. Do I care about that? I have an option to glimmer this turn. Is that just better here? I think so. I think so. I'll have cast out to brawl with that thing. If he dares put an aura on it of some kind. And okay. Well, we targeted that card with Gideon of the Trials, so that's not going to do any damage. Basically fogged. We, we know how that works. We know how that works. Let's uh, find some land and a counter. Is that good? I mean, it can't be too bad. But too many counters isn't great. I'll take the land, but I don't think I need another counter spell. Now, I know some people would absolutely flip their lid at such a play, but if, say, I have to tap out next turn to play the cast out and our opponent puts something else on the battlefield, having a handful of counters won't deal with that battlefield card. Control, you really want to have variety available to you in your hand. So, which one to target's interesting? I guess what I most would want off the battlefield is the spirits, so I'll target the double striker. Oh, it's going to have a think. And I am not going to da jam a Jace Unraveler here. So if you want to be able to tell what got Jace, you got to zoom in. Okay, so he pause. He's going to target here. Damage is prevented from this, however. So that's awkward. On one hand, he's not going to do much. On the other hand, I would love to cast out the thing that the Destiny is targeting, but it looks like that will not be the case here. Let's see if our opponent has learned how Gideon works. It appears they have not. How depressing. As that's really going to bring down the quality of our game. But I have to say, I feel like this hand is a pretty, pretty dominant hand as it is.
And we'll just keep shutting you down. Now, did I target the right permanent? Yes, I did. I can see the blue text from here, but it is worth noting that it's a permanent. You can accidentally target Angelic Destiny if, uh, if you make that mistake. All right, Envoy in the house. See if we keep attacking here. Nope, opponent learned that lesson at least. Um, second cast out? I think we'll just pull from tomorrow. Draw four can't be too horrible. And we hit a gear hulk. And there we go. So yeah, now we're setting up. Might take a while to win. But when we probably will. Go, do I leave the envoy and just not worry about it? If so, what am I discarding? I guess I'm just gonna deploy this Jace. I I, I'm losing respect for the, what my opponent might be able to do, so I'm just going to go with it. And a land, bottom. I'm sure we'll draw more. And a Blessed Alliance. We'll just discard the sensor that we were likely to cycle anyway, although I guess I could keep it. What would I rather lose? I guess the Blessed Alliance is the worst, doing the least. Least likely to get played. There comes the Nimbus Wings. That will go over there. I think we're about to Wrath time. Although, given... Eh, whatever. We can give them back the Angelic Destiny, but I don't think it will matter. Our opponent's going to have a think about where to send the Envoy. Eh? Eh? Okay. <laughs> now do they have anything for us to censor or scatter? Passing turn. So let's cycle our censor. I think it's very unlikely to be important. And a second Blessed Alliance to replace the one we discarded. At this point I suppose a land would be great. But we're going to try to go for the prison strategy where our opponent can't cast any spells because they'll be countered by a Jace ultimate and can't kill us because we have a Gideon ultimate. There we go. And I believe I will just take this. We're going to have to discard if we don't play something, so I'll just disperse this envoy by a turn. Punch my mic. Or, you know... Because inflicting pain and suffering is what I'm all about. I guess we can keep his mana limited. No reason to let him have that when we have cards in our hand that might need to be discarded anyway. And here comes the free 1-1s, one maybe? Maybe not. And the game moves on. See what we hit. Reproach is fine in this matchup. Plenty of targets. Yedian, keep keep climbing, homie. Keep climbing. Just keep on shining, bro. Bro. I think Gideon understands the value of Jim Tan Laundry. For anybody who watched Jersey Shore, not that I did, I just, I had to know what it was because it sold a lot of GTL t-shirts. Alright, so our opponent's going to play the Titan. I think the best thing to do for that is exile it. Not that I interact with the graveyard, I really don't. So maybe just the best thing is to planar outburst it. Hmm. 
problem with cast out is it's such good removal you rarely want to play it. I'm just gonna do nothing and ultimate Jace and then make some plays. Here we go. Not even gonna make the land, not gonna need it. Oh wait, that thing has indestructible. <laughs> not my best moment. <laughs> uh, I got lulled to sleep there. All I did was give him back his uh, angelic destiny. That happens sometimes, you get lulled to sleep. But now I have to leave up my mana. Yeah, uh, Titan is a lot better when I don't have creatures. I often forget that. Uh, not a card one plays against very often, but the way that it works is if you control no creatures, it has indestructible. And there's the concession. Fortunately, Gideon does not care what's indestructible. Yes, of course I was making that play so Blessed Alliance would kill the Titan, of course. Now our opponent... That, the reason that's not a good line, honestly, is because of the Call of the Bloodlines. Our opponent didn't use them, but had they, there's no way to ensure that my Blessed Alliance wouldn't just hit a Bloodline token. Got a Jace avatar with a stormy background. We could have zero Gideon and cast planar. That is for sure. That would be a fix had I been using my brain that turn. Mumioso. Running them Jace leaves. Uh, weird. Very weird hand. If we didn't get the free seven, I would not keep, but since we do, I will. Or if we didn't get the free seven, I would keep. Oof. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Really slow. Could get destroyed. Could get destroyed. So what I was trying to say is I think the first hand is a keep in traditional magic mulliganing rules where you don't get a free seven. I think it's better than a six. Since we get a free seven, I took it, and here we are on six. Our opponent's got Thing in the Ice on turn two. Thing in the Ice, not a very scary card against us. We have a lot of solutions. Of course, if we don't draw them, that won't matter. Sensor is a pretty good peel there to make sure nothing too scary like a Liliana happens this turn. And now, perhaps we're in a control mirror, so perhaps what you're going to see is a lot of land drops. Yep, here we go, settle in. Do you like control mirrors, kids? Could be in a grind. Usually, drawing the most lands is the key. Just hit them, uh, hit them land drops, keep building. Westvale Abbey might come in really handy. And just, just hang out. All we need is for our opponent to start missing some land drops. How about that, opponent? You want to do that? We've got a bit of lag, so you're going to hear me hammer on the button every time something's about to happen. All right. Hammer. Let's see if this resolves. It does. It does. All right. Put, the, put down the abbey. Here's my plan you got
opponent missing the land drop now. So let's uh, get to work. VT Bob, do you think he should have countered the draw spell? Tell me about it. No reason not to send in the 1-1. One, one. BT Bob says that he's surprised that the draw spell was not countered. People have opinions about that. They are very different. They're very divergent opinions on whether or not you counter draw spells in control mirrors. Select for inspection. Interesting. Not a card I've seen much of. It depends how many counters you have in your deck, I would I would argue, because while it is basically a two for one to counter a draw spell, if you don't have as many, it's one less counter in your deck, and those are the most valuable spells against the opponent, so it depends how many win cons versus draw spells you run. In duels, I usually do try to find a time to counter a Glimmer of Genius, but I do not worry very much about countering uh, things like Hieroglyphic Illumination. Glimmer is significantly better. Opponent was definitely super optimistic on spiking a Sire of Stagnation, that's for sure. Here comes that card. Is there anything to get back? What what have they played? I guess you get select for inspection. I mean, oh, you can get the uh, sire. Yeah, that makes sense. So we'll stop that that shenanigan. Not a card I expected. So our opponents going up near the top rope and playing some cards that have grindy elements. Maybe it's closer to a mid range deck than we think. That is just has a hand of removal spells. That's always something that can happen in control matches, where you don't really know what your opponent's about. Maybe they're not running counter spells at all, maybe it's all removal spells, how would you know, until you play some cards. Comparative analysis. So now I'm in a spot where I have two counters. They're doing that main phase, which I do not recommend. I believe I can counter this. Not something I would normally do, but I feel like we're ahead, well ahead. Our opponent's having trouble hitting their land drop, so I think this is a time for this play. All right, let's make a 1-1. One, one. Now, there is some risk to making 1-1s one, as our opponent's down to two counters on Thing in the Ice. If they have a handful of removal spells, they might use them. But I suppose I welcome that. Get the cards out of their hand, use their mana. When Thing in the Ice wants to rumble, we'll play the Blessed Alliance game. There's the murder. Alright, our opponent's tapped out. So we could pull from tomorrow on a tapped out opponent. We could also planar outburst the Thing. I suppose that's the cleanest answer. That makes sure the least amount of things can go wrong. Pull from tomorrow would be for... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 mana, 8. So I would pull for 5, leave up 3 for a scatter or a blessed. I think that's the play. To get these 5 cards while our opponents tap down. All right, and we got another pull, so that's good. And I think the cards we need the least will be here, here. All right. If our opponent wants to flip thing in the ice, we'll make him ha counter the Blessed Alliance to get value out of it. And then outburst on our turn and it dies anyway. Maybe we take seven, but it's no big deal. It's not. Not gonna be enough pressure. Here comes Jace. So this is interesting. If our opponent has sensor, they get their Jace 
and their thing, but then we untap Planar Outburst, Awaken, hit their Jace. Seems good. So I'm going to go for this, even if he has the counter. Does not. Battle at the bridge for nothing, except to deal me seven. Seven point battle at the bridge, okay. Perfectly fine with taking a punch from Thing. Just going to 11 is not a big deal against another control deck. They're going to have a hard time getting the damage in. And now we'll play kind of a more... Um, play a more attrition-y game. Kill his thing, make a thing. Attack with our, our land. Make him deal with it. Then probably find a window to pull again. I'm starting to think our opponent is not a counter-focused mage at all. There's the Neva. Um, any value to censoring here? Nope. Could go for the flashback. Maybe we censor that. The aftermath, I'm sorry. It's the Millennium of Aftermath. Ain't gonna be nothing after that. Give me one more Platinum Plaque. Rep, you can have it back. Dr. Dre, anybody? Little, little Dre in the house? Um, all right. He's targeting Planar Outburst. It's not like I care a lot, but it's better than cycling it, I suppose. And now, whoo, is that better to resolve? What's better? Um, I think I'll just take this window to play the Gear Hulk, really. Pole, pole can come later if he deals with our Gear Hulk. But Gear Hulk Glimmer, when our opponent can't do anything, is probably a good play. Double Disperse. Ooh, I like it. Disperse is a lot like uh, Negate in matchups like these. So our opponent targets uh, our Torrential Gear Hulk with a removal spell. Disperse, and then we get the value off the recast. Not perfectly like Negate, but since we don't have Negate, we gotta improv somehow. Well, there's a card. There is a card. What's the solution to that? Um, okay. Interesting. So let's kick you off the playground and see if you want to tap to counter it. You want to spend two spells on that disperse? Our opponent does. Now they should let my, they, yeah, they should make me pay here. And I'll at least act like I'm going to pay. Well, I will. I mean, I'm going to pay and make him spend another spell. So here we go. It's only six cards in the graveyard. Not the hugest disciple I've ever encountered. All right, there's our counter. Halla frickin' Luya. So, our opponent might be scared to drop the Disciple Shields, but let's see if they want to tap this Gear Hulk. They do not. Send it in. So, how many spells? Only two. Not a big deal. We could let him attack with Disciple and bless it, but we also have a window here where we could disperse it and counter it on the way back down. Now I find disperse and the counter magic to be a lot more valuable than the Blessed Alliance, so 
We'll see what happens. I may be begging for trouble, but I'm going to let Disciple stick around. With only two spells in the graveyard, I don't see a way for it to go horribly wrong unless he finds a way to flip his deck into his graveyard. Basically to traumatize himself. Any of you remember that card? Yep, the tank is real. Here comes the attack. And we'll just play that with no kicker. Yep. Can only make me tap four, which still leaves counter magic open. And it looks like our opponent has has uh, conceded that the Disciple is meant to die. Down to one card. I suppose we can go for a pull from tomorrow. I doubt they have a counter spell. So we'll just uh, run it up. Run up, go scoreboard. And we have a message. As you might expect, the message is a GG. Our opponent knows it's in the bank at this point. Jace on the field. Pick him ups. Bottom you. Pass turn. Lands away. Twenty cards to go. Both of our Gideons are down there. Well, we can, we can make a 1-1 one -one with the Westvale on end step and present lethal. If they have a removal spell and they don't use it while we're tapped out, we can counter it. Or we can draw the Gideon. Nope, it wouldn't let us pause. It completely prevented us from pausing. I apologize if this seems like BM. I meant... I certainly meant to end it there. But now I guess I have to do what I do. Do my best to uh, battle correctly. Oh, now I'm getting lagged as I try to attack. The lag is getting pretty extreme, I'm afraid. And I'll just go to discard cards, as my opponent already sent me the GG. They know it's over. I'm just having trouble finishing off. Finishing through the lag storm. Oh, here's stuff. <laughs> Ouch. So he shows us the last of the hand. And there's the Gideon that would have been the lethal. Had we drawn it the turn before. And that's blue white taking down a blue black deck. Our opponent did run a counter spell. They had broken concentration, but it appears they drew it far too late. Alright, I believe we can go for one more. Try to find it. And we have found another Jace-like challenger in the wasteland. Hanging out, ready to brawl. Let's hope they bring their A-game today. A 
planted turnip? I mean, okay. Got a got a veggie lover in our midst. Can definitely keep this. Is a tad slow. Could get us in trouble against something very aggressive, but we haven't faced a very, very aggressive curve yet. That's an interesting curve filler to draw. And here is Telling Time main phase. Plan Turnip will not have Telling Time get censored. They know very well how valuable it is to tell the time. Absolutely. Time is 6.30, by the way. Could have just asked me. All right. I'm glad I don't have to make a decision about the tap land there, holding up Essence Scatter. Now we can go straight up to four and Glimmer, so... Easy peasy. So do we throw Gideon into sensor mana? As kind of a macro format thing? I do not. I am in no hurry. I do not have to be the beatdown to win. In fact, I probably should avoid that roll at all costs. So if there is things that can go wrong, they probably will. See? See what would have happened? See what would have happened? All right. You've got to go. Not that Gideon can't race a tutelage, but we just can't have that shenanigans. That's a good draw in this situation. I'll do the tap land. If I don't get to Glimmer, that's fine. I can wait. But you know when they have one tutelage, there's probably another one right around the corner. They always draw doubles, right? Lifespring Druid? I'll just hit that with Essence Scatter as our opponent seems constricted on lands. Right, Illumination. Yep, we'll just keep the counter magic up so we don't have to bank on drawing a cast out if a tutelage resolves. And it is a Welkin turn. Okay. Not... Not what I expected to happen. Let's glimmer. Yeah, those are good. Pretty much exactly what I want. And now Gideon will lock down this Welkin turn forever. Haha! -ha. Gideon's like, what? You want me to lock down a 2-1 flyer? I got you. 2-1 flyer can't block me? I got you. Whatever you need. He's down for it. He just nukes anything. Whether it's a Welkin turn or a giant... Uh, or a Heart of Kirin. Giant Ulenwald Hydra. And there's an inspiration. I will let him have that. I'm not, not worried. And Disperse is fine, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. But right now we're just gonna tick up for a while, maybe draw some cards, maybe counter some things. We're gonna get Jace out there, we're gonna ultimate him, and we're gonna run the prison mindset. Yeah, it's a good thing I drew my, my Gideon to keep the Welkin turn on lockdown, or who knows. opponent in the tank. What will they find? What will they come up with? They've already thrown us curveball after curveball from turn three tutelage to welcome turn. Uh, you can certainly have that elvish visionary. No problem. And now Ulenwald Mysteries. I'm going to start by drawing two cards and see if that changes that I want to counter that, but I do want to counter that. Do not want to get ground out by Ulenwald Mysteries. All from tomorrow. Hello. Let's knock that down. Touch. Play the Unraveler of the Secrets, since we can do it with Scatter Up. 
and start the plus train. And interesting. Do I want this? Yes, I don't. I have better things to do with my mana, and I won't need it to win this game. It's better in the control matchups. Kind of stinks to draw another land, as I'd much rather have the Abbey than another land. But oh well. Now we're closer to better draws. You gotta get them. You gotta get through them anyway. They're stacked in the deck that way. You just have to get through it. Here comes a Rex Sage. Um, here comes a Frost Lynx. Part of me just wants to let all this resolve and pull from tomorrow and find. Yeah. Yeah, this is all fine. <laughs> we'll let all the dorks happen and then we'll go find a planar outburst. And if we don't, we'll find other removal spells to pick this thing apart. We also have Disperse, so any if he throws a lot of damage at, say, Jace, we can just bounce it to our hand. Broken Concentration. Going up. Cast Out. Not a bad card. Certainly a card we can take. And for turn, Jace will prevent damage from the Welkin turn. Why not? Keep it consistent. And be convenient for our opponents so they don't have to dig around trying to find out what we targeted. And play Drago. Lots of reactivity going on. Moving Wild Mysteries returns. I think we can safely throw a counter spell on that. Not looking to scatter the winds with Awaken, making a creature just gonna get it tapped down by Frostlings or something of that nature. Just thinking about what to attack where. Okay, that's fine. I'm not gonna mess with his attack. Wait till see if he has a pump spell or something. As long as it doesn't kill either Planeswalker, I do not care very much. As long as they get to live. Now I can pull for four here. Seems good. We could pull for more in theory, but that would just be greedy. Probably don't need more than that to win, and now I don't have to think about discarding. Alright, going up. Renewed Faith. Do not need you. Got plenty of life, and the cycling alone doesn't make it worth it. And yeah, we'll keep targeting this. And what are we going to discard? Or is there anything we can just play this turn? I guess we can play the cast out. I don't love it, but better than discarding. And let's take away something we don't care about coming back. I guess that should have been the turn, but I'll make it the Frost Links. I don't want to hit the Reclamation Sage, because if I end up with two cast outs on the battlefield, he can Rex Sage my cast out. And then get back to Rex Sage, targeting the other cast out. I don't debate that blue has got a lot of decisions to play. It's a different kind of hard. Playing magic optimally, like perfectly, from any perspective is hard. It takes a lot of work. So, I don't disagree that blue is very hard to play, but aggro is hard to play perfectly too, especially, you know, if you're really, really going for perfect. I would say it's easier to get about 80% of what you need out of aggro than it is to get 80% of what you need out of control. Just my opinion. Alright, here come dorks. I guess we'll bless it, Alliance. This lets the cat out of the bag that he should be attacking with the creature that we target with Gideon. So that's going to make things difficult for the second Alliance. So now we just want to make sure that Gideon targets their best creature, so if they're going to sack it to an Alliance... 
that we hit something we want to hit. All right, commit all you. Mm -hmm. What do we most want to hit? I guess it's still Welkin turn. Because the, these things, like in, when they're in the graveyard or on the battlefield, I guess you can bounce them or something. Maybe it should be the Rex Sage? Yeah, because then if he sacrifices it, it's not on the battlefield, so he can't just bounce it. I guess that's fine. And the stall tactics continue. Takes a lot of patience. Lots of patience. Y'all feeling the patience right now? That's fine. Not worried about his drawing of two cards. Not worried about him telling that time. And here come the dorks. Let's see if he attacks with everything this time, now that he's seen Blessed Alliance. Nope. Alright, so we'll go... That. Opponent will make their choices. Goodbye, welcome turn. And now we'll try the Gideon's Reproach. See if there's a blossoming defense, perhaps? An essence flux. Do I care? I think I will commit your essence flux, as I would be happy to have that back in your deck to draw two turns later. When they're... I guess he has a Rex Sage, so I have to watch out for that. So maybe we have to counter it later, but now I get two turns to figure it out. Figure out how to deal. No thanks on the land. Planar outburst, sweet. Uh, I think it's time for the beatdowns if I'm gonna kill that sage. Am I gonna kill that sage? I guess I have to now because of the essence flux. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can make a guy and leave up a counter. Let's wait one turn, though. We'll wait just one turn. What's under here? Frost links. <laughs> Awkward. Just not a very good card. All right, that card. Do I care? What's he gonna draw? He's gonna draw the Essence Flux. Well, I'm gonna draw two cards and see if that... If I draw another counter spell, I definitely don't care. Or a Gear Hulk. Oh, two more cast outs. Wow. So now he can target the Sage and I can blow that up. So I don't care about him drawing the cards. <laughs> Gimmick Man with a great quote, watching Barney play is hard, which is not the same thing as watching Barney play hard. <laughs> I like that. I like that. If you know what he's talking about from watching Barney on Twitch, Black Barney, um, then yeah, <laughs> that's a thing. Other Gideon. Well, with a Gideon on nine, I don't think that's coming down anytime soon. Uh, don't need you. Hello. Let's start throwing the beats. I think it's time. Now that my plan is to... Oops, that was an emblem. <laughs> oh, I gotta read the cards more. Especially when I get going. It's always when I start feeling too relaxed that I make these bad plays. 
Pouring over the pages again is fine. Now what? Count of the telepath. Well, can't really allow that. I have a lot of good spells. He could draw plenty of cards off that. So, gotta say no. I will just awaken. Don't think there's a much better use of my mana. I will block. Pause. Essence Flux. Pause. I guess we could have double flux. Is that a huge blowout? No. It's fine. Oh, we're gonna do this game. There we go. Just do the little pump fake and get it back. Disperse is also great if you have a sensor that's empty because they move the target, say, with an essence flux or maybe a target at walking ballista, something like that. You can disperse your sensor and find a better target if you need to. One of the billion uses for a disperse. Oh, you can't make more emblems? You can only emblem once? It's interesting. Here comes the fog! They got us. They got us. Guys, hit it! I want uh, exclamation point fog. Fill it up. Fill it up. It happened. It wouldn't be a stream without it. There you go. Bring it out. Bring it out. Yep. Hit that fog command. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are on it. All right. 10 mana. Ulamog. Is it time for Ulamog? No. Not quite Ulamog. So much fog going on. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Yeah, get wrecked. That's, that's what it is. And veggies. Okay. Let's draw. <laughs> Twelve cards in the deck. More than enough, though. You only need a few. Um, Disperse is interesting. I guess if we don't play some of these cards, we're going to discard them. So, well, I wouldn't normally disperse. I think we just can here. Keep in mind, guys, we have the, um, we do have the memory. Yep, we do have the memory, so we don't need to worry about getting super milled, I don't think. But who knows? Also, we can't lose the game to a mill. Uh, because we have the emblem. As long as you control it, you can't lose the game. So we may not draw any new cards. We may have to win with what's in our hand, but we wouldn't we wouldn't lose to an empty library, which is... I don't know, I kind of want to try that. It's, it's... How would I put this? It's a bit ballsy. <laughs> it is a bit ballsy, right? Because if he just has a bounce spell for the Gideon, we lose. But I kind of want to see what happens. I do want to know if we just lose the game or not, because even if we're not supposed to, we're talking about Stainless here. You want to see the empty library? You guys want to do an experiment? You want me to empty my library? Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Could be fun. 
Why not, right? I think we know... I think we know uh, that we could put this game in the books if we wanted. Altered Ego. Pause, please. Let's just say no. Uh, that 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 sounds like a disaster. <laughs> oh, I can't be countered. <laughs> nice, right? All right, cool. You got an altered ego. Forgot about that. He made a land. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay. Um, I guess we'll take a sensor so we can cycle it. There's the Gear Hulk. That's something. There's the Abbey. Um, go ahead and cycle. Come on, come on. Why is it being funky? Let's go. Bitty hop. And doop a doop, boop a doop, six. Down to six. Do it. Our opponent's at 16? Okay, so, going up. Hey, we're down to stuff we cycled away. So this is gonna be like all land, right? <laughs> nice. I guess we can Hulk Glimmer, that's two. Then we have six left over, one, zero. So we can't do it this turn. All right. I guess we can get him in a position where he could die. Get it closer to that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Alrighty. So we'll just discard. Got him at four. Which makes planar outburst lethal, interestingly. And there's the tutelage. No! I guess he's helping us, right? Let it be. Let it be. Wild instincts. Okay. <laughs> sure. You got it. You got me. Come on, mill me out. You're supposed to mill me out. Alright. He hits it. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, empty deck, guys. Let's see what happens. Our opponent's like, what? <laughs> to attack <tax> Jace. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Alright. And... Ha-ha! We're alive! We did it. We lived. Show him the Gideon. The power. This is just flexing muscle here. This is just flexing muscle. Prepare for the angry Reddit thread. I'm just gonna draw a card while I'm at it. <laughs> Boom. Nope, nothing. And ta-da! Blue-white doesn't even need cards in its library to win. Just another... Just another ex... Just another example of me being a hacker. Yep, exactly, guys. Uh, anyway, I'm, on, I'm only repeating what they're saying in chat. These are jokes that we make. For those of you watching on YouTube thinking I must be the most arrogant person ever. I'm often just responding and reading chat. All right, so that was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed with a little bit of seal clubbing with blue-white. I don't like how slow this deck can be, but man, man, oh man, card is, 
it's uh it sure takes a long time to win and a lot of patience probably can induce a lot of anger on ladder do not grind gold this way you have been warned all right thanks for hanging out with me i'm off for the evening i will probably make some time tomorrow and you guys all take it easy see ya